Good morning, friends, and welcome to August Worship at First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. We welcome everyone this morning to our usual worship service, but this morning we will also include the Sacrament of Communion. So if you came to worship this morning and you didn't have a chance to prepare by getting a little piece of bread or whatever you have in the kitchen to eat and a little bit of juice, then feel free to do that and then continue with our worship service. So let us open with the words from the prophet Isaiah. Ho, oh, everyone who is thirsty, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Buy wine and milk without money and without price. Do not spend your money for that which is not bread. Rather, eat what is good, that you may live. Come, let us worship and glorify the Holy One together. Today's reading is from Matthew 14, verses 13 through 21. Jesus feeds 5,000. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy some food themselves. Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied and the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about five thousand men, besides women and children. Good morning. Please join David and Lucy in singing the first two verses of Great Thou, the Bread of Life. Jesus accomplished. There are six times in the gospel that this story is told again and again with slight differences. In the gospel of Matthew, the story takes on quite a poignancy because it is, fall, it is preceded 
by the story of Herod's birthday and the feast that was given in his palace for his birthday. And that also happened to be the occasion on which John the Baptist was beheaded. And that experience, that story, that history part happens just before some persons who were present at the death of John the Baptist and had buried his body then came and told the news to Jesus. And Jesus, according to the scriptures, went to take a quiet time away, went to the other side of the sea and just tried to process what had happened to his cousin and how it had happened. Those, these two stories of the birthday bash at Herod's palace and the feeding of the 4,000 couldn't be more different. And painters throughout history have tried to depict in broad and brilliant ways the differences between them. There is a huge painting that hangs in the Prada that is long and wide and details the incredible array of costumed persons that were attending Herod's banquet. On their faces, there's an impassivity to what horror is going on in the middle of that banquet. The tables are laden with food. People are crushed together all around Herod, trying to vie for his attention, trying to give him the honor and the glory that he asks for in this birthday bash. And the other, the other story, the other meal is totally and completely different. This morning, um, I'm going to talk about the painting that was done by a small band of Christians in Northern Cameroon, a group of Christians who have decided that what they would like to do is to create in their own way all of the biblical stories, and they're called the Mafa Jesus stories. And the painting that you'll see as you look at the worship service this morning is one from the Mafa series. You'll notice in the very center of the painting, just as Herod is placed in the center for all the attention in the grand paintings of his feast. Jesus stands, a very quiet figure with a brilliant red robe on, and he is holding a loaf of bread, one of the five barley loaves that came as a resource when Jesus invited everyone to be seated and invited his disciples to find some resources without going to the marketplace without going away somewhere else, just to inquire what existed there. And it is a lovely centerpiece where Jesus in his red cloak reminds us of his own blood that was shed for all of us. And the fact that he is holding the bread reminds us that he is the living bread. Scattered all around him on the mountainsides, are the thousands of people who have been listening to him all day long. There is no sense that they need to crowd around him and fawn and ask for his privileges because he has been freely giving healings and hope and storytelling and future opening words to the, all the people there all day long already. They are quietly sitting in their family groupings and each of the 12 disciples has been given a huge basket by Jesus filled with crumbs of bread that have somehow multiplied to fill every one of those huge baskets that they are taking slowly, deliberately, compassionately, hospitably to all of those who are patiently waiting 
And many of them, as you look at the painting, are doing likewise. They are reaching for their piece of bread and then they are turning to share it with someone else in their family grouping. And you can see way in the shadows of the Blue Mountains that there is a great city somewhere else where perhaps something else is going on. But the focus is the peace and the feeding and the nourishing as the day ends on that hillside where everyone has been given some of the bread, some of the fish, and all of the living Christ. What that painting reinforces for me in this scripture is the incredible way that Jesus tried to depict what power was all about and what leadership was all about. Jesus didn't ever use power in such a way that violence was conscripted and used to defend his power. Always, Jesus appears in the stories as someone who empties himself of power, who freely gives away his resources, his gifts, his spirit, his life, morsel by morsel, miracle by miracle, power-filled word by power-filled word. That is so evident in this lovely Mafa painting as Jesus calmly just stands and lets that power be distributed amongst all. But it feels to me as if in those few quiet moments before all the people found him and asked him for more, that he determined that where the future lay for him was giving away that power, especially in teaching the disciples how to be new leaders. So in this particular story of Jesus feeding the 5,000, it is not Jesus who feeds everyone. Jesus distributes the baskets to the disciples, and it is their job to methodically go from family to family, individual to individual, taking as much time as is needed to cover the hillsides and all the people therein. So that what Jesus is teaching is the share economy, not the scarcity economy. And he does that by mentoring. He says, I will share with my disciples, and then they will share with you, and then you will share with each other. And in that way, Jesus takes these five little barley loaves, these two fish, and after blessing them and asking God to be present in the midst of the feast, scarcity is never the word that is the result of that blessing prayer. It is always abundance. It is always more than enough. It is enough that there are baskets left over standing across the hillsides with an invitation to every one of the people gathered there to take some home and share some more. That to me is the message that the Church of Jesus Christ needs to hear this day. We are not in a time of scarcity when there is little funding coming into our homes so that we can't share it and we have to mind it and store it and save it. We are living in a time when people feel like the future will be scarcer than the present. And we need this message of abundance, an abundance that comes through the share economy and the knowledge that we have all the resources we need in the midst of this moment if we are willing to hold them up and have them blessed by God's power.
and then distribute them in trust and obedience. This message of love being baked into every loaf, into every act of compassion, into every impulse to justice, is the new way of becoming leaders in the share economy, in the kingdom that God would have established here on earth. And we can let go of the power that has to fawn and kneel before some kind of a king who feels that even the tiniest voice that comes out of the throat of John the Baptist is worth silencing in defense of the power, that little power that he can grab as his. That is not what love is about. And so this day, we can celebrate in the knowledge that in this moment, when fear and death and anxiety and scarcity are all the possibilities around us, we can look again at the Malfa painting. We can look again at the table. We can look again at that calm, deliberate vessel of Jesus, ready to pour out love, always ready, always ready to invite us to do the same. And so my friends, as we come today to the table, I would invite us to hear this invitation. The invitation from Christ today is simple. Sit down where you are. You don't need to run off somewhere else. You don't need to go to a nearby market to get the Sunday paper or a new loaf of bread to use this morning in the homes where you are. Just sit down because communion is possible wherever we are with whatever resources are before us. No one needs to be sent away because the hour is late or the surroundings are deserted and empty. You who are alone because you are vulnerable to the virus or are simply alone because the distancing crowd worries your heart and you feel lost in its wilderness. Jesus has compassion enough for all of us. He wants to heal all of us. He wants to feed all of us. And he will break the bread into as many pieces as we need. He will mash the fish, oil, and the stench of the fish smell all over him until everyone has a morsel to eat. He will give away the blood of his life until all of us have blood enough from him to live. So bring whatever is in your kitchen. It will be enough. And when you come back, we can eat and drink and all will be good. And let us gather this morning in the goodness of this simple feast. For we have had prepared for us the cup and the plate. And I invite all of us to come and eat this priceless meal together. For we remember on hillside and in upper rooms, in parties where it seems that everyone who was there drinking and eating with Christ was so delighted and so at ease that people thought that even though the hour was early morning, they must be drunk. No, it is the gladness of love. And so we come that we might take bread and cup together. And we remember how Christ took the bread before him and after he had blessed it, he broke it again and again 
saying, this is my body which is broken for you. And as often as you eat of this, you remember me. And ministering in my name, I invite you to eat of this bread. Our Lord also said, after they had eaten, take of this cup. And after we give thanks to God for it, then let us drink of it together, all of us. For it is the cup of blessing in a new covenant, in a new covenant where forgiveness and love and community reign. And all else, including sin, is put as far away as the East is from the West. And each time we drink of this cup, we do remember Christ. And so, together this morning, ministering in his name, we eat together of this bread, we drink of this cup, and we know Christ's peace. everything we bring to you. With your blessing, our deep scarcity becomes enough to sustain us. And then, our enough becomes an abundance we can share with others. Oh, we so pray that your spirit of life and love, of tenderness and power, can rest upon every bread and every cup that they may feed the inmost need of each of your children. And then, a great grace may pour forth from your people, that they might rise up to change the world more and more into your image. And, O oh, risen Christ, live in us, that we may live in you as we pray together, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Oh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us again and again from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are pleased that you have chosen to be part of our worship service here at First Congregational Church of Hampton, the church that has been proclaiming Jesus Christ in Hampton since 1638. We are a Christ-centered church with an inviting faith, a growing faith, and a serving faith, and we welcome you to join us in accomplishing this mission. We also encourage you to join in the wonderful worship of giving. You can give securely online or by check using the giving information on your screen. We are a praying church and we sincerely want to pray with you for any needs you may have. You may send those prayer requests to the church office by email, which is also on your screen. Again, we are happy that you have joined us in this service and hope that you will be part of our worship again soon. 
having had the word broken open for us, having had bread and juice together broken for us, having perhaps had our hearts broken open as well this morning, I send you out with the last verse of a wonderful hymn in the United Church of Christ hymnal called, Let Us Talents and Tongues Employed. Let us go with these blessing words. Jesus calls us in and then sends us out, bearing fruit in this world of doubt. He gives us love to tell and bread to share. God, Emmanuel, is everywhere. Jesus lives again. Earth can breathe again. Pass the word around. Loaves abound.